heaven's name is Harry Gat Wagner. Your new conductor. This letter from your representative in Leipzig will explain who I am. How old are you? Twenty-one. Young man, I'm afraid I have no use for you. You need a conductor, don't you? I do. But rather than hire a beginner, I'll continue with my concert master. He's a man of great talent. It's without genius, talent is merely an affliction. Huh. And you have both, I presume. Talent and genius, huh? Yes. I have here two finished operas. Herr Wagner! I have operas by the hundreds. What I need is one conductor who knows Mozart's Figaro. Well, I'm your man. You are too young. Good day. But believe me, I can help you. It seems to me you believe in nothing but yourself. You're wrong, sir. I believe in God, Mozart, and Beethoven. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, poor old thing. Oh, I'm very good, right? Did I hurt you? Where is it? Oh. I beg your pardon. Your concern for Fritzel is very touching. May I carry this for you? You were going in the other direction. Oh, but that was before I met you. May I? As you wish. Are you a singer? No. An actress. Oh, yes, I should have known. You're much too slim to be an opera singer. Oh, <laughs> thank you. You don't seem to care much for opera. Well, I wouldn't exactly say that. <laughs> Kernigsberg 
Now that's something to be proud of. Not for me. I have higher aspirations. The higher they fly, the farther they fall. Only those who lose faith in themselves. Minnow, you don't believe in me. Do you think I would have given up my career if I had no faith in you? But have you faith in my work, my opera? How can I have faith in an opera I've never even heard? But I know you are a good conductor. Oh, there's no satisfaction in conducting all these Italian and French operas. They're not even worth the work I put into them. But it pays. We have a lovely home with nice surroundings. And you like nice things, don't you, Richard? Minnow, you're too modest. Wait until my Rienzi is produced. Hmm? Oh, if it turns out to be a success. It's made more successful than all of my bears' operas. You're always reaching for the stars. Unless you reach for the very highest. You can't get very far in this world. I know my opera's good. It's modern. It's new. A new age needs new music. I'll give it to them. I moved from city to city, but the conditions in the German theater were so bad that I decided to go to France. We traveled by sea. It was the only way I could take Robert, my dog, with me. And during this stormy voyage, I conceived the idea of my opera, The Flying Dutchman. At last we arrived. Paris, the music center of the world. Oh, Monsieur Wagner, is it? My respect, Monsieur. I studied your work with very great interest, and I admire you tremendously. Thank you. What can I do for you? I am a composer, Monsieur. Oh. And like yourself. This is the overture to my new opera, The Flying Dutchman. I'd like to play it for you. No, 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 no. France, please. Yeah. Uh, no, but you're. But writing a full opera, complete, with arias, duets, ballets, that's a different matter. Oh, but I don't want arias, duets, and ballets. They interfere with the action. I intend my operas to be dramatic symphonies, music dramas, I call them. Oh, I thought you were composing operas. That's right, but not in the traditional sense. You see, right from the very beginning, when I'm writing the libretto... You write your own stories. Of course, it's absolutely essential for them. <laughs> From here, please. which will be repeated again and again throughout the opera. I call them light motifs. Light motifs? <laughs> <laughs> yes. You see, in my operas, each character and each dramatic incident is expressed by a particular theme. Splendid, young man, splendid. I would really like to talk to you about it sometime when you have more time to With stand. pleasure, Monsieur Wagner. Unfortunately, I'm seldom in town. My operas are too difficult for most conductors, so I have to conduct them myself. I could conduct them for you. Oh, you forget, monsieur. You not only lack the necessary experience, you lack the necessary name. All I need is the opportunity, and Paris would know me. You don't know Paris, young man. I'm sorry I bothered you, monsieur Meyerbeer. Monsieur Wagner, I've written you a few introductions. You'll need them. Thank you. I'm very grateful. Good day to you. Monsieur Wagner. Don't let it upset you, Monsieur Wagner. 
It's not my Abea who's against you. It is Paris. I know why you came here. Because you thought it the maker for artists. And it really is. But there is too much struggling talent here. That's what makes Paris such a difficult place to conquer. One day I shall live like this. Fame and fortune have a strange habit of always lingering around the next corner, Monsieur Wagner. In me, they have a relentless pursuer, Monsieur List. Today is the 13th of June. Give me one year and I shall come back to you with Paris in my pocket. Monsieur Wagner, how did you end up like this? By waiting, Monsieur List. By waiting in the outer offices of all the publishers and theatre managers all over Paris. With Maya Bear's introductions in their hand. But I was defeated, not on the stage. Tell me. Maya Bear was right. It's reputation that counts, not talent. But you have no name, young man. You have no name. How that followed me like a Greek chorus everywhere I went. Somehow, through it all, I finished the Flying Dutchman. Then I didn't have the money to mail the scores to the German theatres. I borrowed many times from wealthy friends in my life. But do you know what it's like to borrow from little people? From the butchers, the grocers, the fishmongers. Ah. There's no reply from the German theatres. Even I got tired of my explanations to my creditors. The end was obvious I was arrested. What has been done to get you out of this? Tell Nothing. Me. As I can't pay my debts, I've agreed to serve consecutive sentences until each of my creditors has received satisfaction. But that's inhuman. No, 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 not at all. I eat much better here than I did at home. Now time to work on my new opera, Lohengrin. Lohengrin? Yes. The story of knighthood and chivalry. Man's highest aspiration symbolized by the Holy Grail. How in this environment could you ever think of chivalry and knighthood? When I'm with Lohengrin, this does not exist. Richard! Richard! Good news. The court theater in Dresden has accepted the Flying Dutchman. Mira! Oh, Mira, Mira!
Ja. Congratulations, Herr Wagner. Thank you, Your Majesty. And Mina, uh, Your Majesty, may I present my wife? You must be very proud of your husband, Frau Wagner. Your Majesty. You are a Saxon, Herr Wagner. Yeah, Saxons are bright people. You have approved it again with your opera. Some said it was too, uh, too noisy, uh, but not for me. <laughs> Others didn't like it at all. One of my ministers, Herr uh, von Mal, for instance. But he just doesn't like art. Holy opera, Your Majesty, only opera. His Majesty's opinion is still correct. You know, Herr Wagner, I liked the Song of the Sailors particularly well. What a fine military march it would make. You know, for parades and so. Yes, I know, Your Majesty. Uh, there's one thing, Herr Wagner, I want you to watch when you write your next opera. Don't make it so long. Yeah, people should not stay up so late. I, too, should be in bed by now. Good night, Herr Hofkapellmeister. Her Majesty. Why wait till tomorrow? Tell Herr Wagner no. It is His Majesty's wish that you, Richard Wagner, shall be court conductor of the Royal Opera. Richard, aren't you happy? I wonder if I'll have time enough to compose now. Be practical. You don't have to compose if you get paid as a conductor. Oh, Minnell, please. It seems to me, Herr Wagner, that you abuse your new position. You were engaged to conduct the Royal Opera along tested and traditional patterns, not to revolutionize His Majesty's Institute. If Your Excellency would be good enough to read this pamphlet concerning certain reforms of the Royal Opera... Herr Wagner, you are wasting your time. If you would read it, Your Excellency, you would realize that I have no desire to revolutionize the present system of the opera. I merely want to reform it to get a better orchestra. His Majesty's musicians played well enough before you came along. Well enough is not good enough. The musicians are overworked and underpaid. They have to play opera, drama, ballet, vaudeville, church music, and even military parades. Herr Wagner, will you excuse me? Very well, I shall appeal directly to the king. In the future, I don't want to receive this man anymore. He's a dangerous reformer. I wonder what's keeping him. He is usually on time. Is anybody else coming? Semper told me he would try to be here. Semper? Minnow, one more plate. Do you think we have enough? More than enough. What's the matter, Minnow? Aren't you well? You're not sick. If I'm sick, it's because you and those men in there make me sick. Why do they have to come here for their political discussions? They're my friends, Minnow. Surely adult men have a right to sit together and exchange their thoughts. Well, I don't want our home turned into a meeting place for revolutionaries. August. Come in. What's the matter? What happened? It's the police after you. In Berlin and Vienna, the revolution has started. I must go at once. You stay with us. I must be where the fighting is. You can do your fighting right here. Uh. Richard, here. There's no one who writes better than you. To the people of Dresden. No. Men and women of Dresden. Richard. Are you mad? For the first time in our life, we have a little security, a steady income. And now you want to ruin it all? Give me that pen. Richard! Men and women are dressed. <laughs> Your Majesty, they are distributing this pamphlet all over town. What does it say? They are demanding a constitutional government, a free press, free elections, or else... Or else what? The abdication of Your Majesty. I want the name of every agitator, every ringleader. I have already drawn up such a list, sir. Read it. Um, Gustav Keats. Michael Bakunin. August Reckle. Traitors. 
Treasure Zone. Gottfried Semper. Richard Wagner. Wagner, our court conductor? Yes, sir. The hungry musician who came to us from a prison in France. The full stomach he now enjoys has evidently given him the strength to turn his pen against his benefactors. Arrest him immediately and give notice to all theaters in Saxony that all works of Richard Wagner are to be banned. <laughs> In May of 1849, Dresden was in an uproar until the king called on Prussian troops for help. My friends were either killed or captured. The thought of August being in prison was torture. Our cause was lost. Oh, Heavenly Father, keep him safe. Richard! Oh, where have you been? Shh! Hurry up, pack our things, we're in trouble. What trouble? It's all over. Soldiers are going from house to house. We must get out of here. Oh, no. Not I. I warned you, didn't I? I told you to stay away from those anarchists and lunatics. I'm trying to quibble now. A man in your position, with a fine government salary, taking that kind of a risk. It's stupidity. Sheer stupidity. Loud. Hurry up. There's no time. You can go where you please. I'm staying here. No, you can't mean that. We belong together, you and I. I'm not going to starve again because of your foolishness. You'll never be anything but a bankrupt musician living on borrowed money. Soldiers!
Richard, we've been hearing rumors about the uprising in Dresden. You were not involved at first. I was. I shall never forget those three days and nights, never. My friends will be revenged. This fight will go on until we're all free. I can't understand you, Richard. You were misled. Clarence, you weren't there. Yes, yes, I know, but that's not the way to make this a better world. You didn't know what you were doing. I knew what I was doing, and I'd do it again. I'd ring the storm bells in every city, in every town, in every village in Germany if I thought it would do good for the people. And I would help you. Cosima. It's about time this country was aroused. Shh. Please. Richard, you cannot stay here. The official warrant of your arrest can reach Viner any moment now. You mustn't be found here then. France. If there was only some place that I could stay until the storm was blown over. We could hide you. No, Richard is much safer abroad, in France or Switzerland. Why, I have wonderful friends in Switzerland, the Wessendogs. They would help you gladly. France, I have no papers to travel. Oh, well. Papa, a Swiss friend of yours who broke his ankle last week. He won't be traveling back for some time. Herr Wagner, you can use his papers and send them back long before they'd be needed. Why, that's a brilliant idea. Yes, Richard, yes. Why, we have a fellow conspirator in the house. Strategy's nothing less. My guardian angel, Cosima. Dear Franz, Although exiled from my homeland, I shall give my country the best that is in me. A music drama in four parts, The Ring of the Nibelung. I'm presenting some excerpts from this work next Sunday at the home of the Wesendocks, to whom you so kindly gave me an introduction.
Thanks, Robert. Oh, I couldn't bring the dog along with all that luggage. You mean you've left him behind? No, I sold him. I was afraid I was going to run out of money. You knew how much I loved that dog, and yet you sold him? Don't make such a fuss about a dog, Richard. Madame Wagner? I'm Mathilde Weisendank. I came to welcome you. Thank you. Well, I hope you will be very comfortable here. I'm certain of that. <laughs> you must be very tired from your trip. I won't disturb you now. But please, Maestro, may I come back to listen to your music again? Whenever you please. Thank you. See you soon. Thank you, madame. Musical, isn't she? Yes. She is. Oh, I feel so wonderful away from the house here. I could climb a tree. I could, I could stand on my head and... Oh! <laughs> come on. Come on, sit down. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> Listen. The wind in the trees. The voices of the forest. Beautiful music. Nature can be so inspiring. Nothing inspires me more than you, Matilda, my muse. Oh. To hear that from you. Without you, there would be no Siegland and no Isalda. Tristan, beloved. explain why I cannot have a ballet in the first act. I have already explained, Richard. Fashionable Parisians dine late and do not come to the opera before the second act. Then they will miss the ballet. Bravo, Maestro. Do not compromise. The Emperor has spent a fortune in this production. We've had more than 100 rehearsals already. Now shall all this be lost? Hans, I'm extremely grateful for what the Emperor has done for me. To please him, I've written a ballet for the opera, but where it is to be placed must be left for me to decide. My friend, will you please try to understand French society? There is the Jockey Club. The Jockey Club? Mm -hmm. What is the Jockey Club? A group of men. The richest, the most spoiled and arrogant in all of France. Yes, 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 but what has this to do with my Tannhäuser? Nothing. Yes, nothing. Only that those sweethearts happen to be members of the Corps de Ballet. Are you trying to tell me that it's not my music but the legs of their favorite ballerinas that interest them? Exactly. And that's why it is imperative that the ballet be performed in the second act of the opera. An opera by Richard Wagner is not a vaudeville show. You cannot change Paris, my friend. And Paris cannot change me. Jockey Club prepares for opera fight.
All Paris turned out for my opening. Every seat in the theater was taken. Only the second tier of boxes was empty. Their owners, the jockeys, had not arrived. was so strong that after two more performances I decided to withdraw the opera. I rushed back to Zurich and buried myself in the neglected Tristan and Isolde. Second act of Tristan finished. Otto for you. For me? Nobody has done for me what you have done. <laughs> Richard, for your birthday present, allow me to secure the continuance of your work. Hmm? <laughs> Mina. <laughs> 10,000 francs. Minna, I must dance and I shall burst for joy. No, I'm, I'm too tired to dance. Excuse me. Minna. Please forgive her. She's not very well. What I did for you, Richard. Oh, Matilda. Thank you. It's just my color and the right material, and it's as soft as rose petals. Thank you very much. Here's to Here is to your future, Richard. The Tristan and Isolde. Gustav. Yes, Ava. 
deliver this letter over to the villa. Yes, Sir Wagner. Oh, Gustav, where are you going? Herr Wagner wants me to deliver this letter to Madame Wiesendonck. Oh, well, I'll take it for you. I'm going to the villa anyway. You go back to your work. Oh, thank you, madam. Did you deliver the letter, Gustav? Frau Wagner wanted to bring it to the villa herself. What? Oh, why, Amina? Here. What do you have to say to this? What do you mean? You're trying to take my husband from me. Uh, Amina, I... I'm very sad to see you suffer like this, but... But please, try to understand. You have a husband destined for immortality. And I'm only one of the thousands who love Richard Wagner. I don't believe your husband would appreciate that. He knows about my friendship with Richard. I don't think he knows this. The melody came to me when I thought of that day in the greenhouse. When I read to you the first draft of Tristan and you the loveliest of women, embraced me with the words, I love you. During that wonderful moment, I knew the essence of living. When shall I see you again? What are you doing here? I finally told her. What? Oh, I can't say it as poetically as you and your letters to that woman. But I told her what I thought of her just the same. What do you mean? I couldn't stand it any longer to be treated as if I were a nobody. No. One of us must be insane. Here at last we found a haven where we can live a good life. I don't want this kind of life. Oh, no, please, no. Mina, please calm down. Excitement is very bad for you. Oh, Mina, how are you? How many years? Richard, nice to see you again. Of course, Mina. Richard. Hans. Uh, let, me, let me introduce my son-in-law, Hans von Bullo. Of course, Mina. A bride? Yes. The young people are on their honeymoon. Congratulations. And I'm on a mission to Rome. What? Uh, let's talk about you, Richard. How's your work coming along? How are you getting along with your Tristan and Isolde? Is it completed yet? Yes. Except the last act. And we shall see about that.
without you. What shall become of Isolde when you are gone? town 
gone since you returned to Germany. Yes, I know. I am here on behalf of His Majesty King Ludwig II of Bavaria. I have orders to take you to the King at once. Is this a joke? Herr Wagner? Have you any credentials? My credentials are these gifts to you. A picture with His Majesty's signature and this golden watch as a token of the King's esteem. When will you be ready to leave for Munich? His Majesty has left for Niffenburg. His Majesty left for Hohenschweingau. stay in my life. I'm dreaming. Then let me awaken you, master. Please? in all cultural matters. Herr Wagner and I have met before, Your Majesty. Long ago, in Dresden. Then I'm certain you share my enthusiasm to have a genius like him at our court. Herr Wagner has never failed to make a great impression, Your Majesty. There are things of political importance, sire, that need your immediate attention. Later, later. Your music is essential for my life. I wanted to meet you ever since I had heard your Lohengrin. Did anyone of you know about this man's appointment? I have never heard his name mentioned before. I've asked you to come here to produce all your works and to take complete charge of my opera house. What's the matter? You don't seem to share my happiness. Your Majesty, I... Yesterday I was a beggar being chased from town to town by my creditors. You will not be molested anymore. But my debts are enormous. I promise you. I shall do everything in my power to make you happy. I shall surround you with such splendor that the gods shall envy you. I ordered yellow satin. I don't want that material. I can't work with this color no more. Take it away. Over here, gentlemen, not there. Maestro. Be careful. Do you want to check the guest list for tomorrow's dinner party? Three to four. And his bills. This goes on the console in the corner. Yes. Here's the bills. And by the way, don't forget to send the money to my wife. He's already on the way to dinner. Yes, Gardner, yes, please, about the dinner tomorrow. What would you like on the menu? I thought you were the cook. There are 13 for dinner. Rosa, before I forget. I don't want you to feed my dog any more leftovers, only the best for him. Do you understand? The very best. As you wish. Are these the candles that I ordered? The perfumed ones? Are you Richard. sure? Richard! At last. At last is right. I thought you'd never get here. Richard, you know I had a position in Berlin and... There was a household to manage where we just couldn't drop everything and rush to you. I just don't think it right of you to keep me waiting. I'm here now, Richard. When do we begin? Now. And to go into the music room. I shall take over in here. And be careful with those candles. Hans, there's much work waiting for you. What's the program? Now we shall create the finest repertoire of opera the world has ever known. 
What's that? Please play it, Hans. of a new world. They have not betrayed my ideals. They have created my new world in my operas. I wish I could believe you. You will if you see my new work, The Ring of the Nibelung. It's the culmination of my life. The twilight of the dots. There I've told what's wrong with the world, that wrong cannot be made right, and everything must and will go down in fire and flames. On the stage. His Majesty, the King arrived. Excuse me, August. Uh, August, we must talk some more about this. You will stay tonight and be my guest, won't you, please? I'll be back as quickly as possible. Now I see where you live. Congratulations. Exquisite. Thanks to Your Majesty's great general. I want you to live comfortably, so you may concentrate on nothing but your music. I have never worked with greater enthusiasm, Your Majesty. I don't want you to be unhappy and escape to a monastery like Franz Liszt. There was something more behind Liszt's fateful decision. Would Your Majesty care to see the model for the new opera house? I'm anxiously waiting to see it. The house shall bear your name. Sire, you are too kind. Perhaps I'm only selfish. I want you to stay with me. Excellent. Really excellent. Let's
Let's fill it with music. Please, Richard, play something for me. As you wish, sir. Where is Herr Röckel? He left. He said he had to go back to Leipzig. to be called the Richard Wagner Festival House, to be constructed here in Munich, at government expense, of course. As Minister of Education, I must admit there is a need for a first-class theater. Its effect on our somewhat rustic Bavarian character might prove highly civilizing. If you look at these specifications, this civilizing enterprise is nothing but a passport to natural bankruptcy. And of course, the Rembrandt Perry of the same material. Very well, Herr Wagner. Where's Hans? At home. One moment, please. Cosima, why do you come here alone? Think of the gossip. Richard, the Bavarian State Council demands your dismissal. I don't believe it. Read it. Hmm. Dismissal of Richard. This is absurd. It's monstrous. What are their reasons? The king's generosity to you. But it's the king's privilege to dispose of his money as he pleases. Richard, this is a conspiracy against you. I must see the king at once. Uh, Wagner, where do you want I to go? I an audience with the king. You will not be an answer to the king unless I say the king so. king is not a prisoner, is he? No, but the days of your coming and going at your pleasure are definitely over, Herr Wagner. What does the king know about this? Not there. And a little more. I demand an explanation for that, sir. You are in no position to demand anything. You will sign this statement in which you agree to leave Munich at once. I have a contract for life here. We have given every consideration to our contractual commitments. And if I refuse to sign? Then we will force the king to abdicate. But this is madness. It is madness to spend the country's wealth for theatrical purposes. No sacrifice is too great for the cause of art. You are a corrupting influence on our young monarch. You must put an end to it. Either you leave Munich at once, or the king must abdicate. to Herr Wagner at once. besides my operas. Yes, I know. But mark my words. Now that he has given in to their pressure, they will not rest until he abdicates. There should be no need once I'm gone. What are your plans? I don't know. Perhaps I'll go to Switzerland. We can be there tomorrow. We? Yes, you and I. What ideas are going through your head? Are you out of your mind? Possibly. Cosima, think of the consequences. It doesn't matter. I love you. I 
I've always loved you. From the first moment we met in my father's house in Vima. Remember the rose I gave you? Oh, it was even before that. When my father played Longren for me for the first time. You married Hans. You must have loved him once. No. I told him I loved someone else. But I didn't tell him who. You mean he's never known? He will know now. I'm going to tell him. Cosima. Hans is my friend. You know my feelings for you, but you cannot go with me. It is because of Matilda. You are going to her to Switzerland. You still love her. You know. <laughs>
I can't blame you for hankering after riches when you had nothing but want. However, stealing the wife of the friend who worshipped you as a demigod is abominable. Did you really come all the way from Rome to deliver this moral sermon? I came to stop my daughter's divorce and to take her back where she belongs. You're too late. Broken marriages never bring happiness. citizens in Switzerland risk internment for the duration of the war. That is good, Richard. At last you will have time to finish your Nibelungen. And then after the war we can go to Germany. No, no, and no, have... no. Think what my enemies would say if I were to stay here. Richard, don't think of your enemies. Think of your work. It's just because I think of my work that I say that I must go back to Germany now before it's too late. There's so much to do and so little time to do it in. My poor wanderer, I understand. But I thought at last you had found a home. Will you follow me? Wherever you go, I shall go. Then come with me. Where? To Bayreuth. <laughs> foundation stone for my festival theater was the fulfillment of a lifelong dream. To raise money, I made a concert tour through Europe, while Cosima wrote letters by the thousand appealing to friends throughout the world. Finally, the building was completed, but no funds were left for performances. In desperation, I turned once more to my royal friend, Ludwig of Bavaria. I found him in one of his lonely mountain castles. Take this, my friend, before others take it from me and stuff it into the pockets of politicians. Sire, in the name of all those who will one day enjoy the theater that both you and I dreamed about, I could accept a sum of money. But family possessions, impossible. I understand. Take this check to my treasury. They have to honor it.
for this beautiful hour with the mail. There's a letter from King Ludwig. Ah, that's different. Read it. He writes that there may be difficulties with Parsifal. Certain religious groups are very much concerned about the subject of the opera and have approached Franz Liszt to intervene. Parsifal is not yet produced and they're worrying about it. Whatever you do, the whole world is interested, Richard. Bring me pen and paper. I write to the king at once. You do that tomorrow. Rosita, take this away. The doctor will be here in a minute, and I don't want him to see that you broke your diet. Richard. Yes. Father. This is coming. Now, don't get excited. It's not good for your health. Now, promise me. wants to see me alone. He still can't forgive me. I shall not receive him. That would be wrong. I know my father. We cannot ask the impossible from him. It's enough that he has come to you. I can wait. Master is ready. Oh, father-in-law. I don't know what to call you, but I'm very happy to see you. Sit down, let me call Cosima. No. First, I must speak to you alone on a rather important matter. To you and me, Franz, the only important matters were always music and love. It was a long time ago. Richard, I was told that you're working in a new opera that deals with religion in a daring and unorthodox way. Yes. Pacifier. sacred matters that lie quite outside the field of theater. It was inspired by the Amen, sung many years ago by the choir boys in the court chapel at Dresden. The bells of Mount Salvat hailing the young Parsifal's approach to the Holy Communion. Heresy, Richard, heresy. And trying to take what is best in all religions to show their common path to salvation through suffering, compassion, service, and renunciation. No, Richard, you shouldn't. Hear the temptation seen in Klingsor's garden when Parsifal, like Tannhäuser in the Venus Grotto, resists all manner of temptations. <laughs> The final scene, Parsifal's redemption. The Holy Spear, I bring it back to you. Magnificent.
suffering, sacrifice, renunciation. It sums up what I've learned in my life.